Good morning, everybody. My name is Colin Meckiff, and it's my uh, enormous privilege to be the first to welcome you to this wonderful location in, uh, in Florence for this ALIAS conference. Um, I'd like to thank the hosts, first of all. We'll come back, I'm sure, and give them a big uh, vote of thanks at the end when we've seen what a wonderful uh, hospitality they've, they've offered to us. But uh, they've already done a lot of very hard work to organize this conference. I think we should get around 50 people in and out at various times, some students popping in and so on to listen to the discussions. And I think we're in for a good, uh, good couple of days. Um, the reason uh, I'm starting you off is is because uh, I'm the, what they call the project officer for the ALIAS project. You've all seen the website and you've read the uh, acronym and so on and so forth. You'll have plenty of opportunity to learn what that's all about over the next, uh, over the next two days. Um, I, have to, I have to tell you that um, I am not a legal person and I'm feeling a little bit outside my comfort zone uh, doing this. Uh, I'm an engineer by training. The, the good news is that uh, to help me with uh, alias, I have a legal expert who is Amalia Freeman from the SJU. So whenever it starts getting technical, she's the one who actually helps and gives guidance and so on and so forth. So I do the, uh, I do the easy administrative uh, and other bits and pieces, but the complicated stuff is, uh, is Amalia. Um, we do this uh, activity from Eurocontrol, but on behalf of Cesar, it's part of uh, something we call, unhelpfully, Work Package E, which is uh, to do with long-term and innovative research. Uh, in other words, what, what we're effectively doing is providing some uh, budget, some opportunity for projects that are not part of the main uh, CESAR work program, uh, maybe long-term, maybe innovative, maybe a little bit outside, such as, such as this one, uh, to express themselves. So we have uh, at the moment quite a number of projects. You may be interested to know that we've just launched another uh, call for projects actually, which you can find the uh, information on the CESAR website. Um, and uh, within CESAR, uh, so Peter Hotham will explain to you, for those of you who don't know anything about CESAR, Peter Hotham will come in, in a short while to explain um, what that's all about. I think we have to assume that uh, some of you don't uh, don't know what's going on there. Alias so far, it's been running for uh, about a year or so, but a little bit more than a year, and uh, it's produced a couple of um, important documents in my view already. There's uh, framing the problem document, which actually sets the background, discusses the treaties, looks at uh, liability issues, definitions, responsibility, and so on and so forth. Uh, for me, again, as a non-specialist, uh, very interesting, and a real sort of, um, uh, instruction or basic uh, primer on, on all the issues uh, concerning liability for air traffic management, air traffic control. Um, they produce a second document which is, uh, so we'll have phones off uh, Adrian, okay? <laughs> second document which is uh, a set of um, cases uh, repository of cases. Both of these documents will be made available in various forms um, they're being just finalized at the moment. But I, I took one of these cases, actually. One of them is quite interesting. Uh, as a sort of example of the kinds of things that uh, interest me. So the, so the repository of cases, they've actually analyzed uh, a, a number of um, real-life situations. There's some taken from uh, our industry, such as obviously Uberlingen and Milan uh, Linate and things like that. There's a couple from other industries uh, which uh, provide us with some lessons. Uh, but I picked up one that was, uh, that's called the uh, automated highway system, uh, which they describe as a project that was started in the early 90s in, um, in California, where they started to put together uh, a roadway system, equip cars with sort of self-separating software and all sorts of things like that. Um, and uh, there's a couple of things I, I found interesting here. First of all, um, it was, uh, the project was done by a big consortium, which, and the document says, had widely varying and sometimes conflicting perspectives. And I thought, I started thinking, huh, maybe, um, maybe this is a little bit like Cesar, you know, because um, it's a consortium, certainly varying and sometimes conflicting perspectives, and it's a big, complex project. Um, 
the document goes on to say that, so they put together these cars, they were driving up, up and down, they were separating each other quite uh, successfully and so on. Um, they say the demonstration was successful and the technology proved to be reliable, so everything's looking good for this, uh, for this automated highway system, but at some point the, the plug was pulled and you say um, that obviously budgetary concerns were, 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 was one of the issues, but also liability concerns were an issue because of the complex network of uh, stakeholders involved in this liability issues were never resolved and so this was so this was never done and this is potentially the kind of thing we can look at to learn lessons for our own industry to see where liability issues might be uh, a real killer to the kinds of things we're doing especially for me actually in work package e because i'm looking a little bit longer term a little bit more innovative higher degrees of automation and so on and what we don't want is to get to a point where, because we can't res resolve liability issues, something is just killed uh, stone dead. So I, I picked that one up, and this document and the other one will be available uh, in various forms, uh, document, website, and so on and so forth. Um, that's an example. Just a couple of, couple of observations about this, uh, this conference. First of all, I think um, Discussions are great and, uh, and, and, and helpful and everything like that. But um, for us, they, might, they must go somewhere. They must produce something that helps uh, system designers, engineers, CESAR or whoever uh, to understand what the issues are and helps us to do a job that will not uh, at some point fail for liability issues. So we have to have a product. You'll hear about the legal case being developed by the Alias project, which is very important, I think, and that's, that's one of the outputs. Um, but we have to be going somewhere and not just discussing stuff, otherwise we're just wasting our time. Uh, my final comment is um, something uh, we actually was raised over uh, dinner yesterday evening. Um, Alias and legal considerations are, are transversal considerations. We have this expression transversal projects, which are projects that actually affect all parts of the system. For example, safety. You have to, that goes all the way across the system and you have to be careful that whatever you do, safety is considered in a, in a, in a, a, re, a, a structured way. Um, other transversal things are possibly environment, maybe security, uh, uh, human factors pops up, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, they have to be considered right across the system. Uh, I think probably liability is another one that actually applies across the system in various ways. Uh, the problem with transversal projects and people who do them is that they seem to have uh, uh, always a pocket full of cards that say bad things might happen if you do that. And whenever you start proposing, um, proposing new stuff, changes to the system and automation and stuff like that, the, this flag comes out that says, bad, be careful, bad things might happen if you, if you do this. And um, so I hope, you know, the, the whole liability thing, we could completely ignore and say, okay, well, we'll just carry on regardless. Or you could go to the other extreme and start waving red flags uh, all the way along the process which act as a, 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 as a major uh, a hindrance and a major break to new development. So um, I hope we don't, uh, I mean obviously we're not ignoring the problem but we're not also hopefully wa waving the bad things might happen flag all the time. We want to enable uh, change and we want to enable uh, the system to develop in, 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 in the right way. So that's all I had to say. So I'm going to uh, hand over to uh, Giovanni for the rest of this session, and uh, thanks again for all your hard work. Thanks. Thank you. So <laughs> I will not say anything about uh, about the Alias project. Uh, uh, we will say something maybe at the end of our of our conference, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, um, at the end uh, you will see that uh, we are making some progress uh, towards. Uh, the uh, goals uh, that, Colin, uh, that Colin described. Uh, I would just like to introduce a bit the place where we are and then uh, and give the floor to the, to the speaker. So here we are at the European University Institute. This is uh, a European uh, institution, a postgraduate uh, institute where we have 600 about PhD students coming from all Europe. 
and um, uh, it is divided into four departments, uh, that is law, economics, uh, politics, um, and uh, history. And uh, uh, we have 150 students uh, in, every, in every domain, all PhD students. Uh, we have also at the institute uh, a big research center which deals uh, with research uh, on uh, European issues, but not only. And uh, we have also a European school of regulation that deals uh, with the regulation of various sectors, among which uh, also uh, transports. And uh, there is a section that deals uh, with aviation. So our project uh, uh, fits uh, in a way within uh, the, uh, the objectives uh, of, of the institute. Um, uh, the institute is located uh, in uh, uh, beautiful villas here in the hills uh, between Florence and Fiesole. You have already had uh, a look uh, imagine at the landscape, uh, which is really uh, striking. This villa where we are here is called the Villa Schipanoia, which means uh, something like uh, avoid boredom, um, which was a name uh, that was given at those times uh, at uh, um, the places where the noble family uh, spent uh, their uh, uh, summer time. And um, in particular, this villa was uh, um, built uh, uh, in the 15th century, and uh, there is also a story according to which uh, the villa is the place where the famous Italian uh, writer Boccaccio he wrote uh, a famous uh, series of novels which is called uh, The Cameron, uh, and uh, which uh, I'm not going into the topics of the novel, but they are very quite, uh, where, where uh, he describes how um, a, a number of uh, young Florentines, uh, to avoid the pest, uh, they went in a villa, which seems, according to some, to some stories, to have been this villa Schifanoia, to spend uh, some time together and they told uh, each other these, uh, these novels. Um, tomorrow, if we have some time, I will take you also for a tour to the main building of the Institute, which is called Badia Fiesolana, and which is uh, uh, 200 meters from here. Um, Badia Fiesolana uh, includes uh, a, an ancient convent, uh, which was built uh, on the 11th century, and then uh, there is the Abbey, which was uh, uh, developed uh, in the 15th century, more or less at the same time as this uh, villa, by Cosimo de' Medici. And it was a place uh, where uh, um, the, uh, some of the main uh, um, scholars uh, of the Italian Renaissance, such as Pico della Mirandola or Marsilio Ficino, used to meet. Uh, and uh, uh, it seems that it was one of the places where uh, Renaissance uh, was built. I have been trying to look some connection uh, with uh, airplanes and the villa, but I could not, not uh, find anyone. But if you want, you can imagine Leonardo da, Vin da Vinci looking down into Florence and imagine how it could be possible to fly rather than walk uh, uh, to, go, uh, to go down. Uh, okay, but if you have any questions or about uh, the, the, the context uh, where we are located, uh, I will be happy to uh, answer as much as I can. <laughs>